Friends, we want to welcome you again at Kingdom Life Ministries International. Even this morning, this wonderful Sunday morning, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. We were studying last Sunday, as I promised that we will continue from there, about imitating Jesus and living the way that Jesus wants us to live. And that's very crucial, that's very important in life, to live as God wants us to live. And the Bible says we've got to imitate Christ. Now, we can't imitate him in what we don't even know. So we need to know what Jesus did and how he did it so that we can also learn from that. May God bless you as we study further. Today, we want to conclude this. As I said, it would be a series of maybe two, three weeks, but I'm going to end it today. Studying about uh, imitating Jesus as an individual and as, as a family and corporately as a church and the whole universal church of Jesus imitating and living as he did. Let's start from Colossians chapter 1 today from verse 7. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 7 to 9. The Bible says Paul was talking to the church of Colossae. He said, you learned about the good news from Epaphras. For in other words, you knew you learned from the gospel taught by brother Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant. Watch that. He's not just a servant of Christ. He's a faithful servant. And he's helping us on your behalf. He has told us, Paul says, he has told us about the love uh, that you have from the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit gave you. So the church of Colossae, ladies and gentlemen, it lived a life of love for each other. They loved each other. They, 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 they were practicing love, as Jesus said, a, a new commandment, I give you love your neighbor. So they were practicing that. Now, but watch this. Besides loving God, verse, uh, verse 9, it says, So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge. We always ask God to give you complete knowledge or full knowledge of his will. Full knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. We pray always for you, church, that God will reveal his will. Huh? The knowledge of his will for you as a person and for you as a family, and for you as a pastor in particular, so that you will express and teach the will of God to the, to the church. He says, I, we, I pray that God will reveal his will for you, so that you know the will of God. You know what the Bible says? It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We are destroyed now and will be destroyed then, if we die without knowing the will of God. Because when you don't know the will of God, you do what's not, what is not expected of you. You, then you do what you do wrong instead of doing right. Because you don't know. So the Bible says, Paul says, listen church, we are praying for you. We, your leaders, we are praying for you that God will, will show you, will reveal to you his will, man. His full will for you as a person. Let me talk about the will of God for you as a person today as an individual. Because you are not the peop other people. You are you. Now, the church is prayed for to know the will of God. Now, what is the will of God? Obviously, the will of God is the word of God. Okay? This is the will of God. This is the written will of God. So, if we want to know what God wills, what God wants, here it is. So, you and I have got no excuse. This word of God it's in our in bible pages it is in our cell phones it is in our ipads it is in our computers the word of God is everywhere thank God for it thank God for it it's there so that we learn we study and know the will of God remember we're talking about imitating Jesus so the the the, the church we we the church that were trans uh, we were transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Now, in a kingdom, obviously, there's a king. There's no kingdom without a king. As long as it's a kingdom, meaning a king's domain, it means in that domain, in that place, the, the, the last word, the last authoritative word is the, is the word of the king. Now, the king in the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of Jesus, is Jesus. And Jesus 
it's, it, 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 it's it, in Revelation, he's called the word of God. So this word of God, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesus in paper form. So the Bible says, God, we, Paul says we are praying that you know the will of God. That you, you, you get the complete knowledge of the will of God. It's important to know the will of God. Let's prove it. Let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter 6. I want us to start with John with chapter 6. Then we'll flip over to chapter, chapter 5. And I've got a reason for that. Now let's start from um, verse 20, from verse 39. John 6, 20, uh, 39. It says, and this is the will of God. Uh-huh. This is the will of God. Here is the will of God. What is it? This was Jesus speaking, okay? That I, Jesus, should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will, uh-huh, it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I'll raise them up on the last day. Now watch this. Jesus knew the will of God about him. He knew why God sent him into the world. Remember? He said, I've come, sent by God. I've come to the world to seek, number one, and then to save, to seek and save those who are lost. Remember? We talked about Jesus saying, I've come to the lost sheep of Israel. And then Paul says, no, 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 no. Not only that, God has opened the door for the Gentiles. Okay, so that the Gentiles who believe, the Jews who believe, they, 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 are, they, are, they are put together in the same kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of Jesus. Now, here in this kingdom, there is Jesus, and Jesus is the king. And according to principles, the king's word is final. There's no analysis about it. There's no questioning about it. You don't do that. When the king speaks, that's it. That's it. When the king speaks, he doesn't want questioning. He doesn't want analysis. And all. He, when he speaks, he wants, yes, sir. So we are here in the kingdom. So Jesus said, my father, since he came from the kingdom of his father, he says, I've come so that those who hear me, they hear about me and they believe that I am the savior. They, they, when they believe that, when they believe that, he said, uh, the will of God is that I should never lose any of them. First of all, with his team of 12, where Judas chose to do his own thing, and he got lost by himself. And then there is we now, God, he has saved us, and God transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And Jesus said, uh, uh, the will of God is that none of those who are saved right now should ever be lost. But friends, we are free moral agents. Free, a free moral agent decides and do what they like and never do what they don't like. So we have that freedom. The book of Colossians says that when we've been transferred to the kingdom of light, we, 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 we find forgiveness and freedom. Freedom to serve. Freedom to obey God. Or disobey if you want to. But Jesus said, I know the will of God. The will of God is that whoever has believed in me should never be lost. I know that. So Jesus knew the will of God. Let's go to... Let's go to chapter 5, and we're going to read it from the Amplified, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to chapter 5, reading it from the Amplified. Uh, I, I realize that the Amplified amplifies indeed uh, chapter 5, verse 30. It amplifies, it, it explains much better. Let's read it and you hear. We're talking about the will of God uh, that Jesus um, practiced. He says in verse 30, I am, an, I am able to do nothing from myself independently of my own accord, but only as I am taught by God, but only as I'm taught by God, and as I get his orders, glory to God. Listen to that. Jesus says, me, Jesus, I know the will of God. I never do anything independently. I don't decide to do what I want. He says, I never do anything according to my own accord. He says, I, I, God has taught me his will. 
and he gives me orders. He says, even as I hear, I judge. In other words, I judge according to how I hear God, my father, judge. I decide, listen, I decide as I am bidden to decide. Even my decisions are channeled. Even my decisions, I don't just decide anything. As the voice comes to me from the father, so I give a decision. In other words, I decide according to how I hear God says, Son, decide this way. My decisions are based on the decisions of my father. Oh, my Lord. He says, and my judgment is right. My judgment is just. My judgment is righteous. Why? Because I do not seek, listen, or consult my own will. Oh my God. Because I do not seek or even consult my own will. I have my own will as Jesus, as, as, an, as myself. I have my own will. But when it comes to making decisions, I don't consult my own will. I have no desire, listen, to do what is pleasing to myself. I have no desire in my life as sent by God to the world. I know the will of the Father and I cannot decide against the will of the Father. I don't consider my own will. I've got my own will, man. But when a decision has to be made, I don't consult my will. I hear what the will of God is that pleases him. I don't consult my own will. I have no desire even to do what's pleasing to myself. Oh, my Lord. Jesus said, listen, I, 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 I live my life. I, I, I live it according to the will of my father. I don't. If I've got my own will, but when I've got to make a decision to do whatever or not to do what, I consult my, my father's will. It is my father's will, not mine. I don't even desire. I don't even desire, man, to consult my will. Because my will can run against the will of my father. Because my will can, can run against the decision of my father. So I, I've got my will. I ignore it. I reject it, and I only say, Daddy, what do you want me to do? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you're hearing this. We're talking about imitating Jesus. He says, as the voice Korah comes to me, so I give a decision. And my judgment is right. My judgment is just. My judgment is righteous. Why? Because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what's pleasing to myself. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself. I have no desire to do my own aim. I have no desire to do my own purpose. Hey, are you hearing this? This is Jesus. According to the Amplified, I have, I have no desire to do my own will. I have no desire if I go to make a decision to consult my will. I have no desire to make a decision by myself. All I do, listen, he says, I, I have no desire to do what's pleasing to myself. I have no desire to do my own aim. I have no desire to do my own purpose. But only the will and the pleasure of the Father who sent me. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I have come. I exist to do the will of my Father. I live. I exist to do that which is a pleasure to my Father who sent me. Oh God. Oh God. Paul says, Church of Colossae, we praying for you. That you must know the will of the... You must be filled with the knowledge, the complete knowledge of the will of God. Why? So that when you know the will of God, you will have to practice it. Is there anybody who practices the will of God? Yes, sir. Who is that? Jesus. And that's what the Bible says. We must imitate him. Listen to what Jesus is saying. I, 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 the, 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 the Amplified, man. The amplified, amplifies 
this verse. Let me read it again. I am able to do nothing from myself, independently, on my own accord, but only as I am taught by God and as I get his orders. So Jesus says, my father orders me. My father commands me. Let me ask you this question. Does God order you? Does God command you? If he gives you an order, do you carry it out? If he commands you, do you say, yes, sir? Or do you say, why, sir? If God commands you, if God doesn't want you, doesn't want your decision and your suggestions, and he gives you an order, do you obey it? If God said do something and your head says no, it's unpleasant. It's, 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 it's not enjoyable. But God says do it. Do you continue to do it? Remember the Bible says in the book of Colossi that I showed you last week. He said we have been called to imitate Christ even if it means suffering. Even if it means suffering. Because Jesus suffered. Doing the will of his father. So the Bible says, we have been called to come into this kingdom, which has got eternal benefits of, of, of joy and peace forever. But the Bible says, we will get that if we, if we, if we do the will of the father. And he says, sometimes the will of the father is that you suffer. Oh, suffer. No, I don't want to suffer. I want to enjoy. Exactly, there are things that God gives you to enjoy. But also, there are times which your nature, our human nature, says doing this means suffering. And yet to God the Father, that is his will. You get the point? So Jesus says, listen, I'm going to read it to you again. He says, I am able to do nothing. I don't have the ability to do anything from, from myself. Independently. In my own accord, I only do as I'm taught and as I'm commanded, as I'm ordered by my father. And this says, even as I hear, I hear my father says, judge this way or do this this way. He says, I decide as I'm a, I, I, I decide as I am bidden to decide. I'm commanded, I'm ordered to decide. As the voice comes from the father, to me, so I give a decision. In other words, my decisions are based on the decisions of my father. If my father said, decide that things must be done this way, I decide to do those things that way. My will may be saying, no, 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 do it this, the, 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 this towards the right. But if my father said, go to the left, I go to the left, even if my head, my flesh says, go to the right. Watch this. He says, as the voice comes from the Father to me, so I give you a decision, and my judgment is right. Why? My judgment is just. Why? My, judges, my judgment is righteous. Why? Because I do not seek or even consult my own will. You understand? I don't consult my own will. Listen, Jesus was saying, I've got my own will. But as a son of God, I subject my will to the will of my father. And as I submit my will to the will of the father, in other words, I only hear what the father says I must do, and I do that. Even if it's contrary, 100% or 360 degrees contrary to my personal will, I put my will aside. I don't consult my will when a decision has to be made. I only listen to what is the decision of the father, and I do that. Irrespective of the results, man. He said, that's why what I do, what I say, what I do, is always right. I don't concern my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself. Oh my. I don't do what is pleasing to my own aim. I don't do what is pleasing to my own purposes. But only the will and the pleasure of the Father who sent me. Friends, it's time we make up our minds, friends. The church of Colossi, God said, Paul says, we are praying for you. That God will reveal his perfect will. His, he will reveal to you knowledge about his will. So that you carry it out before you die. I want to conclude this way, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what you're thinking when you're hearing this. And this is the word of God. 
That's the word of God. Jesus, who, who the Bible says we must imitate, he lived that way. No wonder why the Bible says we must imitate him. Because he lived the, the will of his father. And I, I, I realize that in these last days, as the Bible said, the love of many will wax cold. The love of what? Of loving God and to do his will. It will die in us as Christians. What's going to happen? We will develop a Christianity where we do what we like. Where we choose to do what we like. When we do things without consulting God. We do things without praying. We do things without hearing from God. We just desire. We just decide. And we do things. And after doing things, we say, God bless this thing. And God is saying, hey, I didn't say you must do that. I didn't say you must start that business. I never said you must apply for that job. I never said you must marry that woman. I never said you must ag agree to marry this man. Now you say I must bless. No, 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 no. You, you are not in my will. You are not in my will. Because you never consult me. You never want to know what is my will for your life. You decide and you do your own thing. Now you don't come commanding me to do your will to bless your will. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to a, to a supermarket or a shop, there are things in small size. There are things in middle size. There are things in big size. So when you get to a shop, you decide what to buy. But not in Christianity. We got only one thing, one size, the will of God. So you, I've seen many Christians who say, well, I can't do that. I hear God, what God is, but I can't, I'm not able to do that. Let me tell you this, you are able, it's only that you don't want. You are able. God will never say do something he knows you will not be able to do. It's only because you don't want it. According to your will, it doesn't fit your will. And therefore you decide not to do it. And you give the excuse, it is because I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And how many times do we make wrong decisions? And when we are crying, we want God to come save us. God, to some of us, when he speaks, we analyze. And say, that I don't do, or that I don't want. Or if I do that, I will suffer. Or this will go wrong. And you're telling God, by the way, that God, if I do your will, things will go wrong. What things are you talking about? What is it that God doesn't know about you? Friends, it is a spirit of the last days to disobey God. And then you hear some of us preachers saying, it doesn't matter even if you disobey, we're all going to heaven. But let me tell you that we pastors are not the word of God. Some of us are not even called. We called ourselves into the ministry. That's why we preach our own thing. We twist scriptures to fit our will. But Jesus here, he said, when I make a decision, I don't consult my will. Because I don't do what I want. I, I only want to do what is um, the will of God. And also, I want to do what is the pleasure. What pleases God. I, I only want to do that which gives God, my father, the pleasure. Because he sent me. And I close with this thought. Because he saved us, we are supposed to do his will. That's what Jesus said. Those who love me, they do the will of my father. So friends, when you see yourself not doing all that God says do, you must know that it's because you're disobedient and you're not doing things that pleases the father. And I don't know how we'll get into heaven when we do that. I really don't know how we will convince God the Father that we have got the right to enter. You cannot say I've got the right to enter heaven because Jesus died for me. You can't say that. Because the very Jesus who died for you, no, he didn't faint on the cross. He prayed and said, Daddy, if, if, if it's, it's, can't this cup pass me by? But before the Father says, yes, he says, no, not my will, but your will be done. And he subjected himself to the will of God to be beaten throughout the night and then be crucified the following day, stepped with his peer in the afternoon, died and went to hell to preach there. And Jesus did all that. And we refused to do very little things. Not to be beaten, 
not to be crucified for Jesus. Just small little things that, that show that we, we are obedient children of God. We refuse to do that. And we want to go to heaven. Let me leave you there with this. That you think about it. How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Let's pray together. Daddy, I want to thank you, Lord, for your word. Admonishing us. Encouraging us to choose to do your will, Dad. When there is still time. There are many people who have died and their coffins went through the church to the graveyard. And many things you find that are said on that day. Sometimes very good things. But we don't know if those people, those good things that we're saying about the people were really your will. And if those corpses, the owners have gone to heaven. Because Jesus said, only those who do the will of my Father. And we know your will, but we choose to disobey. Instead of imitating Christ who obeyed the will of his daddy until unto death. I pray God that you help us. That indeed as Jesus died for us, we don't die and go to hell. I pray for this daddy in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, come to the closure of our service today. God bless you as you meditate on these very serious issues. Hope to see you next Sunday as we study other things that are very important to our Christian walk and the life after death. God bless you.